You wake from a nap to find your vehicle careering off the road, and you're only moments away from a serious collision. You look over at your driver, who is peacefully snoozing away. And it's in this brief moment that you remember hearing somewhere that if you're ever in a car crash, it's actually safer to relax your body rather than to tense up. I'm a wreck, you don't have a scratch, do you? Yeah, the doctor said I was in such a deep sleep that I didn't tense up. So, what do you do? Tense up and brace for impact, or resist the urge and copy your companion, letting your body go with the flow. Can a relaxed body absorb and distribute an impact more than a tense one? I'm Stu, this is Debunked, and we're here to sort the truths from the myths and the facts from the misconceptions. So, there you are, moments away from an unavoidable crash, and have only a split second to react to the oncoming collision. Let's look at the science and see what your most favourable option is. The logic goes that by relaxing, your various body parts will be able to move independently of each other. This allows the force of the impact to be distributed across more of your body rather than it being focused on specific points. It also slightly increases the duration of your body's reaction to the impact as you roll with the punches, so to speak, again spreading the impact out. The classic example that is often given in support of this claim is that paramedics, doctors and nurses apparently report that drunk drivers frequently sustain fewer injuries in crashes compared to their sober counterparts. Drunk people are generally less aware of their surroundings and are slower to react, making them the perfect real-world illustration of the positive effects of staying loose during a collision. Of course, we should all know by now that a lot of seemingly trustworthy information posted online isn't as reliable as it may first appear. As with many such questions that the internet has attempted to answer, very often the reality is far more complicated. It's easy to get caught up with new stories like this, and I'm sure we're all guilty of reading a headline and taking that nugget of information as fact. But, like we've just learned, headlines can frame the same piece of news in a variety of ways, and those headlines aren't always the real story. If there was a way to decipher what's being emphasised, what is being exaggerated, what's biased and what's even being left out entirely, would you use it? Well, there is. The Ground News website and app helps you debunk the headlines and understand who's framing their news stories in a particular way and why. Confirmation bias is something most of us are all too familiar with, but Ground News curbs the practice of using manipulative algorithms that present you with news that simply support your existing views. It instead allows you to understand how you're digesting the news and what news stories are moulding your worldview. To help you be the most informed person in the room, it has a blind spot feed that presents you with the news that is being underreported by either side of the political spectrum. Take this story, for example, a scientific study with results that are relevant to all Americans, but it has a 0% reporting coverage from right-leaning sources and is being mostly covered by news outlets outside of the United States. For the best way to stay informed, check out Ground News by clicking on my link in the description or visiting ground.news forward slash debunked and discover a better way to read the news. Luckily for our question in point, quite a few studies have been conducted into the science of vehicular collisions. This is no surprise, given the sad frequency with which fatal crashes occur. According to the World Health Organization, approximately 1.3 million people worldwide die every year as a result of road traffic crashes. Globally, injuries sustained from car accidents are the leading cause of death amongst those aged between 5 and 29 years of age. As you can imagine, this is something that a lot of people, particularly car manufacturers, want to know more about. These aforementioned studies have utilised a variety of methods to investigate this question. Some have employed the use of computer models and simulations, while others involve actual sled tests, in which some Objects are strapped into a sled on a track and repeatedly crashed at very specific speeds and distances, while being monitored with various accelerometers, force sensors and high-speed cameras. The subjects in question are frequently a range of crash dummies, as well as actual humans, both active and cadaveric. Yep, you heard that correctly. Somewhere out there, people are flinging dead bodies around for science. Anyway, back to the data. As it turns out, the effects of bracing for impact are not uniform throughout your body. 
In 2008, a study conducted by the Association for Advancement of Automotive Medicine found that bracing for impact results in a higher likelihood of injuries to the lower extremities, or legs as we call them. However, since bracing reduces the movement of the chest, tensing up leads to a lower likelihood of injuries to the upper body. Another study carried out in 2011 at the Institute for Traffic Accident Research and Data Analysis in Japan compared the level of injury risk between that of an active human body and a cadaver. They reported the following. Comparisons between an active human model and a cadaveric human model indicate that muscle activity with the bracing condition could constrain the upper body for frontal impacts and cause more bone fracture risks in upper and lower extremities. From frontal impact simulations performed at the impact speed of 50 km per hour or 31 miles per hour, the cadaveric human model could sustain more rib fracture risks than the active human model. In other words, bracing appears to lead to a greater risk of injuries to the arms and legs, but a lower risk of injuries to the upper body and torso. Essentially, bracing for impact involves stiffening your various joints to create more rigid and stable limbs. During and shortly after a collision, your arms and legs push the rest of your body back into the chair, preventing movement in the rest of your body and reducing the likelihood, or at least the severity, of injuries to the torso, neck and head. The trade-off is that the often fragile points of articulation along your limbs absorb more of the force of the collision, leading to more injuries in these areas. And this isn't apparently unknown to experts and industry insiders, especially those whose jobs revolve specifically around the consequences of car crashes. Despite what some less reputable online sources may tell you about anecdotal evidence from doctors and nurses, there appears to be a pretty solid consensus amongst actual medical experts regarding what to do when you're about to crash. Experienced chiropractor Dr. James Phipps from Phipps Soft Tissue and Spine points out that Research shows that people who are aware of an impending collision and have time to brace for impact have better long-term outcomes and less injury. Similarly, Dr. Keith McKay from Eastside Chiropractic Group asserts sagely that Your muscles are your best defense against the whiplash injury. People in car crashes who are unaware and unprepared for the collision are likely to suffer a worse whiplash injury than those who are aware. So, what exactly should you do in the event of an impending collision? First, you should brace your head against the headrest while using your feet and arms to push yourself back into the seat without locking your elbows and knees. This stabilizes your back, neck and head, minimizing movement during and after the crash. Leaning forward during a crash allows the forces of the impact to move your body around much more easily, which increases the chance of experiencing whiplash and other injuries. Secondly, always make sure to keep looking forward. Having your head turned during a crash, even only slightly, significantly increases the risk of sustaining injuries to your relatively delicate neck. Lastly, brace yourself for impact by tensing every single muscle in your body. Contracted muscles protect the far more fragile structures inside you, such as nerves and ligaments, and generally heal much faster and more successfully. Tensing up before a crash may mean you're more likely to sustain injuries in your arms and legs, but doing so secures your spine, neck and head. Injuries to these parts of your body are often more serious and potentially life-threatening, so protecting them is of the utmost importance. Hopefully this look at the science of car crashes leaves you feeling better prepared should you ever find yourself in such a situation. And as always, try to remember that not everything you read on the internet is true. Oh, that is, unless it's been meticulously researched and competently evidenced, of course. Thanks for watching, remember to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.